Everything consists of atoms. This knowledge is about 100 years old, but today we know much more than that because the supposedly smallest particles of matter are actually something like tiny universes. So is it possible that we ourselves and our universe are in fact just a tiny particle in a much larger world? In this video, we'll explore this question and other exciting details about atoms and the blueprint of our universe. Before we start our journey into the world of the smallest particles in the universe, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel, activate the notification bell so that you are sure not to miss any new video, and give us a like at the end of the video if you enjoyed it. All things are made of atoms. In 1808, British researcher John Dalton first discovered atoms. He and his colleague, Joseph Louis Proust, were concerned with the question of why chemical elements combine to form molecules only in certain integer ratios. The only logical explanation was that the elements consist of smallest units that can no longer be divided. This idea was actually not so new, but was already proclaimed in antiquity by the so-called atomists. This school of scholars active in ancient Greece at about the same time as great thinkers such as Socrates and Plato, had the idea as early as the 5th century BC that all of creation is made up of indivisible particles. They called these particles atomos, which simply means indivisible. How the ancient Greeks attained this knowledge still amazes scientists today, because in ancient times, there were no magnification techniques and no computers. By the way, even today, it's very difficult to make atoms visible. There are some methods by which only the outer region of the atom, or in other words, the electron shell, can ever be visualized. The rest of the knowledge is based on calculations and observations and experiments. The pioneer in the field of modern atomic research was Ernest Rutherford. In 1907, the Manchester University professor and his colleague Hans Geiger bombarded a thin metal plate with radioactive alpha particles. Most of the alpha particles passed directly through the metal plate, but a few were slightly deflected in their trajectory, and occasionally one of the particles was thrown directly back by an object. The deflection as well as the rejection had to be caused by atoms. Based on the observations, Rutherford could additionally conclude that atoms consist of a tiny, dense nucleus, what the alpha particles collided with in the experiment, and this nucleus is surrounded by a largely empty space. In this space, Rutherford completely correctly presumed the existence of negatively charged electrons. So basically, the atom became visible by being bombarded with a beam of tiny particles. This way of making atomic structures visible is still used today. Only researchers of the 21st century have gigantic particle accelerators and ultrafine measurement sensors available for this purpose. Based on the observations of Rutherford and Geiger, the subatomic world was revealed 100 years ago, the world of particles within particles. The great US physicist Richard Feynman proclaimed at the beginning of the atomic age, all things are made of atoms, little particles in constant motion, attracting each other when a little apart, but repelling each other when pressed into each other. And these atoms, as we now know, are made up of electrons, protons, neutrons, and even much smaller particles called quarks. The smallest unit in the subatomic range has not yet been found. Researchers sometimes call this particle the God particle. Whoever finds it is thought to unlock the blueprint of creation. But before we take a closer look, let's turn to a completely different topic. Is the atom a cosmos in itself? In the inside of the atom, Protons and neutrons dance and are orbited by electrons, just as planets orbit stars and star systems orbit galactic centers. Researchers even claim to have discovered that the rotation speed and orbits of particles inside the atoms of certain elements exactly resemble the orbits of planets in our solar system. Here comes another interesting connection with ancient schools of mystery and thought. Even before the ancient Greeks and the atomists, a mysterious scientist of antiquity published very specific laws of the blueprint of creation. His name was Hermes Trismegistus, and the laws formulated by him are known as the Hermetic Law. 
One of the most famous statements of these regularities is, as above, so below, as within, so without. This law from the hermetic principle of resonance says nothing else than that the cosmos of the big parts of the universe, like stars and planets, would have to correspond to the microcosm of the smallest particles. If we spin the law of Hermes Trismegistus further, the hermetic laws would support the theory that our world is or can be part of an even bigger superordinate world. Hermes Trismegistus's knowledge is not a recognized doctrine today, however. There are amazing parallels to modern findings in quantum and vibrational science. What modern researchers are aware of today, this man seems to have known more than 2,000 years ago. And Hermes Trismegistus had certainly no computers and no particle accelerator. The World in World Theory the idea of the micro-worlds in macro-worlds has been taken up by Hollywood already several times. In the hit movie Men in Black 1, the cat Orion wears an entire galaxy as a pendant on his collar. And at the end of the movie, viewers realize that the cosmos of agents K and J is contained in the marble of an alien. This idea immediately picks up the theory of the pocket universe, according to which parallel existing worlds are not linearly nested into each other like Russian dolls, but are arranged along previously unknown, non-linear structures. Let's come back to the world of science. We note again that the structure of the smallest particles and atoms is similar to the structure of the universe. An atomic nucleus, orbited by electrons, forms a molecular bond with other atoms, which in turn gives rise to diverse forms of matter. If the nature of the atom would be the same as that of the universe, the universe would have to have a boundary. We know so far the shell of the atom but we do not know whether the universe is infinite or limited. Today, we know that electrons, neutrons, and protons are not the smallest particles. They are formed by quanta, which are nothing else than pure light. But also, the quantum is not really the smallest particle. Rather, quanta are only half particles. In the experiment, it turned out that quanta can choose between the particle form and the existence as undefined wave in space or that external influences decide whether a quantum takes a solid form or forms an undefined wave. The Role of Dark Matter So far, researchers are still looking predominantly at visible phenomena in space, although quanta are already pushing science to the limits of being and non-being. Quanta becomes waves when they are not determined or measured. If you have occupied yourself with quantum physics or watch our videos regularly, you know the thought models that say the moon would disappear if nobody looked anymore. In any case, this is the world in the cosmos of the smallest particles. Quanta appear seemingly from the nothing and then take shape or disappear again. This phenomenon is known to scientists as quantum fluctuation or vacuum fluctuation. Science is slowly approaching the nothingness or vacuum from which quanta emerge, both at the subatomic level and in the universe. This nothingness or zero-point field, dark matter or matrix of the universe, forms the great unknown. Researchers are trying to unravel the mystery of this nothingness, which is presumably the primordial ground of all creation by studying the atom, among other things. The force that holds an atom together. Until now, science assumed that atoms are held together by the distribution of charges and the relations between neutrons, electrons, and protons. This would be similar to the universe being held together by the movement of stars and galaxies. And this is very probably not true. The relations of the bodies in the universe, among themselves, play a certain role in their stability. Under the visible phenomena, there are cosmic nets on which material phenomena are hung up. These nets are not static, but dynamic. The nets are part of a vacuum or nothingness, which shows that this nothingness is not empty or really nothing. In certain places, such as black holes, the nothing is so compressed that it has enormous gravitational forces. Consequently, it must be a kind of matter. And also, this can act as a kind of glue in the atom as well as in the universe. It's probable that the real secret of the construction plan of the universe and the atoms is hidden in the dark matrix. According to current assumptions, the building block behind light quanta is pure information, which is generated, stored, and conducted in the darkness in a hitherto unknown way. Light appears from this darkness like mushrooms from the earth. With the mushroom, the actual living being is the meshwork that lives under the earth and not the mushroom visible above the earth. Transferred to the universe or the atom, 
One could say, consequently, that the actual form exists in the darkness or in the nothingness. It shows up temporarily in the world of the material appearances, changes there, and withdraws sometime again into this nothingness. This model can be transferred to the quantum and vacuum fluctuation, just as to the lifespan of a human being or a star. Also, you and I consist on particle level of an innumerable number of atoms, the smallest of light particles and information. So is our universe an atom or not? Certainly our universe is not an atom, but consists of atoms. Neither the universe nor the atom are indivisible objects on the particle level. However, the basic structure of the universe and the atom are similar. Both also share a common primordial ground. How could it be otherwise because the universe is built up of atoms? Whether ideas concerning the cosmos in the cosmos are true or not, we cannot confirm today with certainty, but nor can we exclude it. We will have to wait for what researchers find out in the future. If we consider how far particle research has developed in the last 100 years, we will probably already have a completely new picture of the universe and atoms in 10 or 20 years. Until then, you may play researcher and think about the idea that our universe could be an atom in another world. Write us your ideas, insights, and spontaneous thoughts in the comments. We look forward to your participation in discussions on the topic. See you next time at Simply Space.